So the lead code problem we are going to do today is called subsets and we can see that this one is a medium problem and also a very well like problem on lead code. The statement is quite straightforward that we are given an integer array called nums and we need to return all the possible subsets of this given array. So possible subsets means every single possible values or combination of values you can make out of the given array. So let's say that we are given an input element like this and we are trying to determine that what are all the possible subsets that we are going to be able to make. So we know that for any given n value we can make 2 to the power n subsets. So in this case we should be able to make 4 different subsets. Let's understand that what these subsets are going to be. So first subset is going to be quite obvious that is going to be an empty uh, array. Nothing more than that and because that is uh, a subset of this uh, by default because if we remove both of these values still we have an empty array which we are able to generate using this next way we can also generate values just one same way we can also generate value just two and same way we can also generate value one and two so logically using this logic we should be able to try to understand that what is the way we can approach this question and what I am suggesting is that this is nothing more than a decision making algorithm where at every given step you are making the decision on whether you are going to include that element in your answer or you are not going to include that element in your answer and based on that you should be able to come up with these four answers. So let's try to let me try to explain you my approach using this example and then we will try to understand this for a bunch of different other examples. Let's say that currently we are we are given these two these two elements as part of the input. Now the in order to generate the very first subset we have two options and let's say that we are also iterating over this given input array in this fashion. So the moment we iterate over this input array one the very first option we have is that we sh should we include this one in our answer or should we not include one in, in our answer. So let's generate those subsets. So if we don't include one we come up with an empty list. If we decide to include one then also we are going to be able to generate a subset like this one same way uh, next we have the option that after this one we, now the next element in the loop is two. So once again we have the same option that whether we should include this two in the answer or we should not include this two in the answer. So let's say that if we decide to include this two in the answer then we are going to be dealing with values one and two. Then once again we still have one more option that is because remember we are trying to build the subsets so with every single value we iterate to the next we are also going to calculate the possibility by removing the previous value. So let's say that we decide to remove this one completely then also we still have one more option that should we include this value number two inside the answer or not. So once again we will have one more subset like this and then we have reached to the end of our loop so we don't have any more options. So this logic gives us the correct answer of all the number of subsets that we can make where what we did is at every given step we check that whether including that value or not including that value would result in some sort of subset marking those subset in our answer array list we are going to create and this answer array list is going to be list of list because it's uh, at this array is also going to contain bunch of different array values and where we are storing the value of every single result that we are calculating. So once again let me try to go and explain this for a broader scenario the solution I'm proposing and then it should make you absolutely clear on what is the approach we are suggesting. Basically at every single step we are going to make a decision to whether to include that element or not and every single answer we generate it is a it is one of the subsets. So let's say at this very first position we have two options whether to include one as the part of the answer or not to include one. So let's see both possibilities if we don't include one we have an empty list if we include one we have one value that is value number one. Let's say we decide to go down the path of including value one. Once again we have two possibilities uh, whether to include value two or whether not to include value two. If we decide to include value two we are going to have one and two. If we don't include value two and go to the next element we are going to have value one and three and that's it. Now these are all the elements we have so we won't be able to go any further but we still have a decision to make which is over here that after this one two it, do we need to include three or not include three. So let's include three so that is going to be this decision one two three. If we don't include three then that then it is just one and two that's it. Now once again now we took care of all the possibilities with value number one. 
now let's try to work on value number two so once again we have the possibility of including two or not including two we already calculated if we don't include two then it is going to be an empty list so let's include two now so by doing that we are going to have one uh, decision tree like two now at this two once again we have two possibilities include three or not to include three so let's decide to include three then we are going to have value one uh, two and three and that's it now if we don't include three we already calculated that possibility over here and last one is value number three so once again for this value number three we have two possibilities whether to include this one uh, one and two we already calculated all of these by including one and including two if we don't include one and two then we have we only have one possibility that is to have value number three and that's it so these are every set every single decision that we are able to generate we are able to see that what are the values being generated by those decisions and all of these are actually the answers or the subsets that we need to record and that's it this is the crux of the, the entire problem uh, and the whole solution so we can see that we are being able to generate in total these eight values and these eight values are actually the answer we are looking for now let's try to think about that how did we generate this answer the logic is quite simple we do this recursively and using backtracking and how do we do backtracking and recursively let's understand this with first of all what is the recursive pattern so we know for recursion we need we need two items first one is a base case and second one is a recursive function so base case is quite obvious that whether we have ex executed all the possibilities uh, or we com we completed every single element so both of these base cases works perfectly fine because at every step we would be able to record generate an answer so this is our recursive function that whether we exhausted all the possibilities or we we don't have any more elements that we need to traverse over now what is the recursive function it is also quite obvious that as long as any particular elements exist then once again record both possibilities of including that value and not including that value as part of the answer after doing that once again do a recursive call back to the same function in order to check that if you include that value then also what are the remaining values persisted call back the recursive function with those values once again if you don't include that value what are all the remaining values persisted once again do a callback operation and if there are no other values left then basically just do a re return call so this uh, recursion would be able to generate the answer now why do we need to do a backtracking and that is also quite obvious because uh, what we are doing is that we are building a decision tree so let's say that we are given this values one two and three so once again for we first check all the possibilities for this value number one so we check their value number one then we check value for one two and one three and once again we check for value one two and three and after at this moment we will once again have to go back and see that did we miss out any particular element or any particular possibility that we did not check so so far we did not we checked all the possibility over here we checked all the possibility over here once again we do a rollback once again we check did we check all the possibilities yes we did so once again we do a backtracking and go to the next element and once again repeat the same operation and that's why backtracking is the backbone of this problem that allows us to solve this problem flawlessly and pretty smoothly so this is how we are going to be able to use uh, solve this problem using backtracking and recursion uh, and this is these two typically go ha in hand in hand whenever you try to solve some problem using backtracking most likely doing it recursively would make much more sense we already know what is going to be the time complexity in this case that is going to be big o of uh, n multiplied by 2 to the power of n because that is all the possibilities we will have to check now let's quickly see the coding solution so coding solution is quite straightforward uh, first of all we have our subsets class where we are receiving an, a nums as part of the in input then we are generating a list of array list to store our result and then we are going to call our recursive method that we have created that is called generate subsets now we are passing in the current index the starting index then we are passing in the nums array and we are also passing in a variable to store our result uh, and also we are passing in a new array list or the current array list that we are going to be creating that we would be adding at every single subset iteration now let's see our helper method 
so first of all the moment we enter inside our sub uh, subset we are first of all going to add whatever the current array list that we have been able to generate it so far as part of our result as a new instance of the array list and then we are going to have a for loop that is going to simply iterate over every single index position inside our nums array where we are going to check for the following first of all we are going to add the current value as part of the current iteration that we are building which would be added into the array list or in into the result in the next iteration of the uh, recursive call then once again after adding the current value we are once again going to call the current value as part of the result um, uh, or sorry as part of the recursive call and this is our recursive function and after that once that is done we are going to be removing the current element in the next iteration why because let's say we are dealing with five elements then at every given instance we need to remove one elements after we have we are done iterating every single possibility at that value so this is that step and that's it so by the end of this array every single value should be populated inside our result uh, array list that we have be, been able to create it and uh, at the end of this uh, sub uh, recursive call is done we are simply going to return that value so let's try to run this code seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs 100% faster than all the other solutions and also it is excellent in terms of uh, memory utilization as well so once again the solution of this code is available on our github repository so you can go and check it out from there thank you